The Chanson de Gesta, Old French for Song of Heroic Deeds, is a medieval narrative, a type of epic poem that appears at the dawn of French literature. The earliest known poems of this genre date from the late 11th and early 12th centuries, before the emergence of the lyric poetry of the Trouviers and the earliest verse romances. They reached their apogee in the period 1150 to 1250. Composed in verse, these narrative poems of moderate length were originally sung, or recited, by minstrels or junglers. More than 100 chansons de gesta have survived in around 300 manuscripts that date from the 12th to the 15th century. Origins Since the 19th century, much critical debate has centered on the origins of the chansons de gesta and particularly on explaining the length of time between the composition of the chansons in the actual historical events which they reference. The historical events the chansons allude to occur in the 8th through 10th centuries, yet the earliest chansons we have were probably composed at the end of the 11th century. Only three chansons de Gesta have a composition that incontestably dates from before 1150. The Chanson de Guillaume, the Song of Roland and Gourmand et Isambart. The first half of the Chanson de Guillaume may date from as early as the 11th century. Gourmand et Isambart may date from as early as 1068, according to one expert, and the Song of Roland probably dates from after 1086 to c. 1100. Three early theories of the origin of chansons de gesta believe in the continued existence of epic material in these intervening two or three centuries. Critics like Claude Charles Fauriel, François Reynaud and German romanticists like Jacob Grimm posited the spontaneous creation of lyric poems by the people as a whole at the time of the historic battles, which were later put together to form the epics. This was the basis for the Cantilena theory of epic origin, which was elaborated by Gast in Paris, although he maintained that single authors, rather than the multitude, were responsible for the songs. This theory was also supported by Robert Fortier and by Elia Cute Owen Gautier. At the end of the 19th century, Pio Rajner, seeing similarities between the chansons de Gesta and old Germanic Merovingian tales, posited a Germanic origin for the French poems. A different theory, introduced by the medievalist Paul Meyer, suggested the poems were based on old prose narrations of the original events. Another theory, developed by Joseph Bader, posited that the early chansons were recent creations, not earlier than the year 1000 developed by singers who, emulating the songs of saints' lives sung in front of churches, created epic stories based on the heroes whose shrines and tombs dotted the great pilgrimage routes as a way of drawing pilgrims to these churches. Critics have also suggested that knowledge by clerics of ancient Latin epics may have played a role in their composition. Subsequent criticism has vacillated between traditionalists and individualists, but more recent historical research has done much to fill in gaps in the literary record and complicate the question of origins. Critics have discovered manuscripts, texts and other traces of the legendary heroes and further explored the continued existence of a Latin literary tradition in the intervening centuries. The work of Jean Rickner on the art of the minstrels and the work of Parian Lord on Yugoslavian oral traditional poetry, Homeric verse and oral composition have also been suggested to shed light on the oral composition of the chansons. Although this view is not without its critics who maintain the importance of writing not only in the preservation of the texts, but also in their composition, especially for more sophisticated poems, subject matter and structure, composed in Old French and apparently intended for oral performance by junglers. The chansons de Guest and eight legendary incidents in the history of France during the 8th, 9th and 10th centuries, the age of Charles Martel, Charlemagne and Louis the Pious, with emphasis on their conflicts with the Moors and Saracens, and also disputes between kings in the vassals. The traditional subject matter of the chansons de Guest became known as the matter of France. 
This distinguished him from romances concerned with the matter of Britain, that is, King Arthur and his knights, and with the so-called matter of Rome, covering the Trojan War, the conquest of Alexander the Great, the life of Julius Caesar and some of his imperial successors, who were given medieval makeovers as exemplars of chivalry. A key theme of the Chansons de Gesta, which set them off from the romances, is their critique and celebration of community, collectivity and their representation of the complexities of feudal relations and service. The subject matter of the chansons evolved over time, according to public taste. Alongside the great battles and scenes of historic prowess of the early chansons there began to appear other themes. Realistic elements and elements from the new court culture began to appear. Other fantasy and adventure elements, derived from the romances, were gradually added. Giants, magic, and monsters increasingly appear among the foes along with Muslims. There is also an increasing dose of Eastern adventure, drawing on contemporary experiences in the Crusades. In addition, one series of chansons retells the events of the First Crusade and the first years of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. The conflicts of the 14th century brought a renewed epic spirit and nationalistic fervor to some chansons de gesta. The poems contain an assortment of character types, the repertoire of valiant hero, brave traitor, shifty or cowardly traitor, Saracen giant, beautiful Saracen princess, and so forth. As the genre matured, fantasy elements were introduced. Some of the characters that were devised by the poets in this manner include the fairy Oberon, who made his literary debut in Huon de Bordeaux, and the magic horse Bayard, who first appears in Renaud de Montalban. Quite soon an element of self-parody appears, even the august Charlemagne was not above gentle mockery in the Pelerinage de Charlemagne. The narrative structure of the Chanson de Gesta has been compared to the one in the Nibelung in Leiden in Creole Legends by Henry Whitman on the basis of common Aram structure as first developed in the work of Eugene Dorfman and Jean-Pierre Tussaud versification. Early Chansons de Gesta were typically composed in ten-syllable lines grouped in assonant stanzas. These stanzas are a variable length. An example from the Chanson de Roland illustrates the technique of the ten-syllable assonance form. The assonance in this stanza is on E. De sois un pin, de les un eglanter un four desto d'iunt, vet out d'or mer, la resiet li race qui dolce france tient, blanche ad la barbe tut florit le chef, gent ad la cause et la continent fear, say kill demand it, ni le resto et in senna. Under a pine tree, by a rose bush, there is a throne made entirely of gold. There sits the king who rules sweet France. His beard is white, with a full head of hair. He is noble in carriage, and proud of bearing. If anyone is looking for the king, he doesn't need to be pointed out. Later chansons were composed in monorhyme stanzas, in which the last syllable of each line rhymes fully throughout the stanza. Later chansons also tended to be composed using Alexandrine lines, instead of ten-syllable lines. The following example of the twelve-syllable rhymed form is from the opening lines of Les Chequtifs, a chanson in the Crusade cycle. The rhyme is on i.e. Or son few at Corberans tos les plains de Shuri, nor en manke, e, bari en zen sa compagni, sir in porta brohardas, fis suden de Percy, en le restore l'avoir morta lyris p, for be li bons dus godifroy se la chier hardi tres de von anthia se en zen la prairie. So Corbaran escaped across the plains of Syria, he took only two kings in his company. He carried away Brohardas, son of the Sultan of Persia, who had been killed in the battle by the clean sword of the brave-spirited good Duke Godfrey right in front of Antioch, down in the meadow. These forms of versification were substantially different than the forms found in the old French verse romances which were written in octosyllabic, rhymed couplets, composition and performance. The public of the Chansons de Gesta, the late public of the 11th to the 13th centuries, was largely illiterate, except for members of the great courts and smaller noble families. 
Thus, the chansons were primarily an oral medium. Opinions vary greatly on whether the early chansons were first written down and then read from manuscripts or memorized for performance, or whether portions were improvised, or whether they were entirely the product of spontaneous oral composition and later written down. Similarly, Scholars differ greatly on the social condition and literacy of the poets themselves. Were they cultured clerics or illiterate junglers working within an oral tradition, as an indication of the role played by orality in the tradition of the chanson de gesta, lines and sometimes whole stanzas, especially in the earlier examples, are noticeably formulaic in nature, making it possible both for the poet to construct a poem and performance and for the audience to grasp a new theme with ease. Scholarly opinions differ on the exact manner of recitation, but it is generally believed that the chansons de gesta were originally sung by poets minstrels or junglers, who would sometimes accompany themselves, or be accompanied, on the VL, a medieval fiddle played with a bow. Several manuscript texts include lines in which the jungler demands attention, threatens to stop singing, promises to continue the next day, and asks for money or gifts. By the middle of the 13th century, singing had probably given way to recitation. It has been calculated that a reciter could sing about a thousand verses an hour and probably limited himself to 1,000 to 1,300 verses by performance, making it likely that the performance of works extended over several days. Given that many chansons from the late 12th century on extended to over 10,000 verses or more, it is conceivable that few spectators heard the longest works in their entirety. While poems like the Song of Roland were sometimes heard in public squares and were no doubt warmly received by a broad public, some critics caution that the chansons should probably not be characterized as popular literature and some chansons appear particularly tailored for an audience of aristocratic, privileged or warrior classes.